YouTube. I know many of you are eager to see this video since I know for a fact that painting is the most fun part of a whip. But before I start, I want to take the opportunity to thank each and every one of you for your subs. This week I reached the 500 mark. I really appreciate it and well, I must be doing something right for all of you to hit the subscribe button. So many, many thanks from the bottom of my heart. Now let's get these shenanigans started. After I prime my parts, I always paint them white since the primer is not entirely that color, more like an ivory, so I want to get the best tone possible for her. I always start by painting the skin tone in the majority of my kits. Unless it has a lot of white, then I start by painting and shading the white parts before the skin tone. When it comes to painting white, you have several color options to use as a shading tone. There's blue, purple, and plain gray. I prefer to use purple this time, as I believe it suits her more due to the color of her palette. I make sure to just shade all those areas where the fabric creates a natural shadow, and also some other areas to highlight them more. goes with the black hair. You can use blue or purple to highlight it or you can just simply not highlight it at all and leave it like that. I like to give any figure I work with a nice effect on the hair, especially if it's very well sculpted. For now, my base color will be blue. I need to make sure to cover everything for the next phase. Alright, now to add the main color. This could be called as a reverse shape. This is the part where you actually apply the true color to the hair, leaving only blue highlights visible where the hair strands separate. Phase 1 of painting is done. Now it's time to mask everything that needs detailed work. I usually start by cutting tiny squares from a piece of masking tape. From that point on, I just apply them one on top of the other to have more control over what I'm masking, especially if it's something circular shaped. This also prevents me from using the X-Acto knife too often and reduce the chance to screw up by cutting in too deep into the tape and passing through the paint. When you do that, you have a higher chance of stripping the paint with the masking tape when you remove it. It's a bit more tedious than the usual time it takes to mask, but the benefits are greater at the end. Plus, I don't waste a lot of tape either. Another way to save on tape is by covering a large piece with plastic wrap or even a paper towel. When I want to shade something yellow, I normally use a light to medium orange color to pre-shade. Then I just add the yellow on top to soften the effect. Since I want another texture on the belt, I'll add a little bit of future with gold pearl X pigments to make it look more satinish. Her skirt was a pain in the arse, but it was worth it. Now I can just paint to my heart's content. the most interesting part of painting a figure, the eyes. In the GK community, we have a saying, 
the eyes of a figure either breaks it or makes it. So I take all my time when doing eyes to get them as close as perfect. I know they don't end up like that, but I try my best. With Nakaruru, I had to decide on what color to use on her since I saw several art images where some would draw her with purple eyes and other artists would give her blue eyes. So I just decided on the eye color she has in the OAV, which was purple. I had already showed a tutorial on how to paint anime eyes a while back, so if you see that I skip a few parts in the filming, you can refer to that tutorial for the full 411. Alright, my eyes are done. I think they came out really cute at the end. I wanted to make something really cool for a base, so I decided to have her kind of tiptoeing on top of a rock in a stream. So before I start, let me tell you what I use to achieve what you're about to see. A basic wooden plank. If you live in the US, you can get these at Michael's or even Hobby Lobby. Instant paper mache for sculpting. I use cellulose clay, but you can use any brand of your preference. I want my base to have grass, so I purchased a little bag of green grass from Cinorama, which is part of Woodland Scenic's products. I got it at Michael's as they normally have a whole section of Maquette's projects, and those products are there. Some liquid spray glue to glue that grass onto the clay. Clear resin. I use Cast and Crafts Easy Cast. It's literally really easy to use. Just mix equal parts and that's it. It also doesn't shrink. And that's a plus. And Woodland Scenic's Water Effects. This last one is a little expensive. It's around $18 to $19. But if you want a very similar product, you can use Liquitex Medium Acrylic Gel. I started by carving in where I want my water in the base. I use regular wood carving tools for that. It's not really hard, but you do need to take your time. Then I sculpted a little paper mache ball so it can be the rock in my scene. Since it's paper mache, you get a neat texture you can use to emulate trees or even rocks. So I begin with covering it all with black. Then I start using the dry brush technique with several shades of gray. Just not 50 shades of gray. a depth effect to the river, I add a little bit of diluted black paint. It will just remain in the more deeper crevices I left on the surface. Then I add a little bit of brown to emulate a layer of dirt.
And lastly, I paint a small area with a green color where the grass will be. This is the part where I use the spray glue. This is so the grass can stick to my surface. Now, doing this takes several layers to cover everything evenly. So after you add one layer of grass, make sure to add another layer of glue on top of that. And then repeat until you have the desired coverage. For the next part, I make sure to have a clean surface so I brush away any tiny grass particles in the area where I want my water. I mix my clear resin with equal parts and just added a tiny bit of blue chalk powder to give it a very very light bluish color, not entirely clear. I pour it into a little crater I carved and make sure to do it carefully so it can cover everything that I want. I use a toothpick to expand the resin to some areas like the back of the rock. Now I can make some stream effects. I don't want it to look like a pond. I want streaming water. So to achieve that, I use Woodland Scenic's water effects to emulate the flow of water around the rock. white right now, but after it cures, it turns completely transparent. Once it's cured, I add the last detail, which is some diluted white, in between those effects to give it more life. But just a little bit because I still want that transparent effect to be visible. I hope you guys had fun watching, and I also hope this can help you with ideas for a next project. So check out how Nakoruru turned out next, leave a comment, go to her gallery on the website, subscribe if you haven't, and all that good stuff. Until next time my Risen Monkeys, have lots of fun!